As you guys know, we've had this Bronco now for almost a month, and so far we've compared it off-road to the Defender, to a lifted Defender, to the Wrangler, and to a lifted Wrangler, but today we're going to compare it to that. That is a brand new Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. So we are driving from here in the front range of Colorado all the way to beautiful scenic Telluride to take on one of the most gorgeous, one of the most scenic, one of the hardest passes in Colorado. I'm of course talking about Imogene Pass. But before we do that, we want to see which of these is more fuel efficient. So it's Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro versus Bronco. As usual, we're going to do our fill up at the gas station and we're going to see what both the pump says and what the car says. And we're going to find out which of these two is more fuel efficient. But you have to wait to the end of this video because, well, in between the fuel efficiency test, we're going to go up and over one of the most beautiful passes in Colorado. As you can tell, we've made it to day two of our Imogene adventure and we're at the trailhead. And it's pretty busy here. You've got all kinds of people wanting to go up the mountain. So we've got dirt bikes, we've got another forerunner, a lot of traffic. But while Tommy's airing down uh, both vehicles, let me tell you about the power plant. So of course, the forerunner has the classic, I do mean classic, four liter, puts out 270 horsepower and it's made it to a, can I, can I say this Tommy, a five speed? Yep. Do you remember, are there any other vehicles that even still use a five speed? Because this Bronco has a 2.7 liter twin turbo V6 that produces 330 horsepower and it's made it to, how many speeds Tommy in the Bronco? 10. 10, that's right, twice as many. Now, I'm not saying that's twice as good, I'm just saying that's twice as many. So from a power point of view, uh, the Bronco has, well, more, but from an exhaust point of view, the Toyota has that incredible TRD pro exhaust on it, which I think sounds magnificent. All right, Dad, so I jumped in the 2021 Forerunner, and how is today gonna work? You know, I think to get a fair and honest impression of both of them, we should uh, switch halfway up the mountain. So why don't you start in the Forerunner, and I'll be in the Bronco, and then halfway up, we'll switch. That sounds like a really fun plan. Now, first up, we've got this little river crossing, and then it's all uphill for the next few miles up a mountain. And speaking of river crossings, which one has more water fording? I do believe the Ford has more water fording. I do believe you are right. I think it's just a taller rig, especially with the taller tires. Now the great thing about Imogene is it's got everything. You go up through a river, then you kind of drive along a river and in a river, and then you get into some shelf road, which I hate, and then you end up at some rock climbing the top of I think it's almost 13,000 feet pretty incredible actually all right well let's do it the first section is gonna be all about them rocks well the Bronco has what Ford affectionately calls goat mode and it allows you to go from different terrain management settings so let me show you I will dial my goat mode into probably rocks so let's see the first one is normal uh, then we can go to eco we don't want that Rock crawl. So dad, in this 4Runner, not only do I have low range, but I have crawl control, which is basically like off-road cruise control. And I also have something called multi-terrain select, which allows me to dial in the vehicle for the type of terrain I'm on. Well, I've got something very similar. I've got something called goat mode, which I just activated. Plus, Tommy, I have a disconnected sway bar, which is just disconnected. So we both have rear locking differentials, but you also have a front locking differential as well, which is pretty cool. Um, but I have something called A-Track, which is like advanced off-road traction control, and that will dial in the four-wheel drive system for the right kind of terrain, basically, and will uh, send power where it needs to go. Yeah, the cool thing about this Bronco is you can do pretty crazy stuff, like you can lock the front diff without locking the rear diff, which you can't even do in a Wrangler, by the way. Very true, Dad. 
very true. So if you want to find the coolest trails in your area and also want to know what to expect when you go out there, check out Onyx Off-Road. This is a great app that we use in our daily off-roading lives and it's really cool. You can download offline maps too so you know exactly where you're going when you're out of cell reception as we are now. Oh, and one more thing, if you're looking to support a great charity, that Bronco was brought to us by our friends over at the Ronald McDonald House, a great group of folks who help the parents of children in need. Definitely check them out, uh, Ronald McDonald House. All right, onwards. You know what the hardest part of uh, taking a Bronco off-road is, Tommy? All the attention you get on the trail. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, that's exactly right. It is pretty comical. Uh, it doesn't get that much attention on the road, but my goodness, the second you bring that thing off-road, you're just swamped with attention, which is uh, pretty funny. You don't quite get that in the Forerunner, but I do have to say, this is still one of my all-time favorite off-road vehicles. It's amazing where these Forerunners will go. Can I give it a backhanded compliment, please? Yeah, go for it. The Forerunner is like an old shoe. It's you know, not the latest and greatest, but it certainly is very comfortable. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny actually, I like that. And to be honest with you, I would still get this Forerunner over many of the new vehicles on the market. This TRD Pro especially is just so capable, so reliable, so long-lived, and it's good at so many things. I gotta tell you, on these uh, kind of undulating rocks and air down, this Bronco is super comfy. I would challenge that. I think this Forerunner is just as comfy, if not more comfy, with this TRD uh, suspension. The biggest difference between the two, of course, is that the Bronco is rolling on 35s and the uh, Forerunner is rolling on 32s, but there's even a bigger difference. Let me show you. Help me, Tommy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Bronco is a convertible and you can take off the roof, you can take off the doors, and you can go and get your proper I was going to say Jeep experience, Tommy, but it's really a Bronco experience now. Yeah, but the Toyota is better for families. It's got a more usable trunk, it's got a window that rolls down for your dogs and your surfboards out the back. So, there's pros and cons of each. The cool thing about this Bronco is it's got a pretty amazing camera. What we have here is Tommy in the Forerunner. You can see where the wheels are pointed, and then you can switch to camera angles to for something like that, where you've got a really great forward view, or if you want, you can go to this one, which gives you the side view, so if you're about to fall off the shelf road you can certainly uh, keep yourself from doing that but uh, my favorite is this 360 it really gives you a good sense of what is around you so the fifth generation forerunner it's been around for a number of years now and it is still an excellent four-wheel drive vehicle and actually an excellent on-road vehicle as well the four liter v6 in this vehicle bomb proof the four-wheel drive system sorted the chassis beautifully well managed so we're coming down this nice steep granite rock face. But let's see if we scrape our butt. Not scraping yet. Approach angle was good. Let's see how the departure angle is. Two inches, three inches. Oh, you just went through the V cut and missed it. I got a slight tap just on the receiver, but that was an excellent result out of the Toyota. All right, here we go. Test of approach. And break over a departure angle. I think this Bronco is going to like ace this. Put on the nose. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I think you have a better, uh, I know, stubby nose, stubby bat, stubby butt. Better, uh, better departure angle. It's funny, we've had this Bronco for a month now and I've actually never taken it off-road. Uh, Tommy's been kind of ruling the roost with it, comparing it to the Wrangler, the Defender. Uh, so this is my first time, and my initial impressions are that Ford just knocked it out of the ballpark. These switches up here are super easy to use compared to, say, a Wrangler. All you do is push them to lock the front or the rear diff. Um, you can also use your turn assist to drag that rear wheel. Uh, but all that is besides the point. What for me is most important with off-roading is comfort. And this Bronco is doing a really good job of that. Let's face it, if you're the one in this seat, off-roading is a lot of fun. If you're the one where our videographer is, it's not so much fun. You're kind of bouncing around and getting tossed side to side. Uh, and Ford seems to have done a great job with uh, Bill Steen, or Stein, uh, in actually building a vehicle that is composed on-road and yet comfy and cushy off-road. Uh, and that's really where it's at for me. I'm 
reminded by how perfectly set up this wheelbase is for moderate to moderate difficult trails. I mean, it's short enough where you're not constantly scraping your belly on breakover stuff, and it's long enough where it's not like a samurai and it's jarring your teeth out of your head. The steering is also slow and predictable, which is probably not what you want on the road, but off-road, it is very easy to get correct tire placement. The Nitto's, not my first choice in off-road tire, but decent grip on both uh, rocks, mud, dirt. On-road, they're good. In the snow, they're okay. And they last a long time. Plus, it's not as extreme as that 35-inch on that Bronco. I actually think this drives a lot better on-road than the Bronco. This is still the on-road king in my mind. go through a nice muddy section so let me go ahead and turn on my multi-terrain select to mud sand and dirt I also have my a track button pushed oh okay that was hard on the skid plate there definitely took the wrong line through that bit oh well, that's why we've got the TRD Pro with all the skids on it definitely got a little narrow through there just to see how the Bronco will do with that got some vegetation growing now off of the control arm trailing arm. Great thing is he went first. I know that there's a big up, there's a little bit of a fall into it. So I'm just gonna go nice and easy so I don't slam the car into it. Come on, somewhere over here he slammed in. Just dropped hard. No, maybe not. Maybe the Ronco has just got bigger wheels and tires. And it don't care. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, love the mudden. All right, Dad, so we've got this little rock climb section up this little cliff face, and I think we should try our off-road automated trail assist system. So, in Toyota, it's called crawl control. I'm gonna go ahead and push the button, set the speed to the middle, and then take my foot off the brake and see if we can climb up this hill without ever touching any of the pedals. So what the system is doing is it sounds like sneakers in the laundry, but it's modulating the throttle, the brakes, and traction control system, and my foot is completely off the brake putting up the gas and we're going to see if it has what it takes to crawl us up this little rock face. So wheels are starting to slip but crawl control is compensating as best as it can. Still not touching the throttle. Pointing straight up right now. Whoa! Nothing but sky. But the crawl control system did a great job of getting me up that obstacle. Now I can dial in a little bit more speed up here at the top when it smooths out. Very impressive system, Toyota. And that's a completely hands-off system. You don't need to lock anything up. You just let it do its thing. Uh, I've got a very similar system. I've got a little, uh, let me show you. I've got a little uh, Bronco crawling over a linguine noodle. Right there, that, that's the Bronco crawling over the linguine noodle. You press that, and then uh, basically right there, it tells you uh, how fast you're going, and you can set the speed with these either up up half a mile an hour or down half an hour mile an hour it's actually pretty cool so we'll give that a shot all right Tommy I've got I'm gonna call it linguini mode activated and I've got it set to one mile an hour and now I'll let the Bronco do all the work is that you on the pedal or is that all the Bronco that's all Bronco not me I got my foot completely off the pedal Bronco's doing all the hard work no hands look no feet Oh, see, 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 no feet. Oh, oh it doesn't like me opening the door. It <laughs> deactivated linguini mode. <laughs> okay, <laughs> set, one. There we go. We're back to linguini mode. No hands, no feet. It's all the Bronco. Don't try this at home. This is a great test of articulation, of grip, and just of general off-road prowess. So Tommy's gonna go up, we're gonna take the hard line, you've got this loose kind of scree, you've got dirt, you've got these steps. It really is a great way to see how well the four-wheel drive system gets a big heavy vehicle up and over this obstacle. I'm gonna ignore the automated tech 
and just turn on my rear locker and see how that works. These Toyota lockers, unfortunately, can kind of be a pain to engage and they spend a lot of time sitting there blinking at you before they actually click on. Unlike the Ford, which is just immediate. There we go, now the locker's on. See how the TRD skid plate works here. Rear locker is engaged, of course. It's gonna crawl my way up, that is a separate the men from the boys. This is where we separate the 35 from the 32, but not the fear. The Toyota's here. Ah, look at that. Tiny, tiny little bump. The Forerunner walked up that. Like the beast that it is. You know, Tommy uh, keeps losing, keeps losing the camera because his departure angle on the uh, Forerunner isn't quite as good as on the Bronco. All right, Tommy, I'm gonna take the exact same angle, but I'm gonna lock her up. <laughs> Talk to me, dude. Is that all I get? Good work? I'm just saying it shows the difference between a front and a rear locker versus just a rear locker on 32s. Yep, your bigger tires are better in the dirt. Go figure. All right, Tommy, according to my watch, we've made it about uh, 12,000 feet above sea level. Oof, yeah, I definitely feel it up here, but I think it's time I have a go in the yellow, orange, orange Bronco. Yeah, I think we switch vehicles and see, you know, what the difference is, because so far, uh, I gotta say, the bigger wheels on the Bronco make a big difference. Or is it tires? Ah, I don't think they make as big of a difference as you think. Well, I'm really curious how that foreigner feels, and we're about to do some pretty hefty rock climbing, so uh, let's swap. All right, Dad, so I've jumped into the Ford now, and pretty big difference. This thing feels bigger. I don't know if it is bigger. I have to look at the numbers, but it feels wider. I feel like I'm sitting lower. Not quite as good visibility, but um, it just feels like a chunker. Yeah, I actually think the Forerunner is just a little bit longer, a couple inches, but I think the Bronco is definitely wider. You know, I always forget just how really good this vehicle is. Uh, because every time I get into it, it's like, you know, getting behind the wheel of an old friend. I know, everybody forgets what a good vehicle that is. It just, it's, uh, I mean, it's been around for so long that it, it kind of loses the limelight a little bit, but wow, that'll just take you to some amazing places. I do think that, like you said, with the 35, the front locker, the sway bar disconnect should turn on. I think that this is a more purpose-built crawler. Well, let's face it, Tommy. This one is $11,000 cheaper than that first edition Bronco. But I, fr I bet you our friend Hugo at Toy Tech uh, could certainly do a lot with 11K. I mean, if you wanted to put a lift on this thing, if you wanted to go 35s, if you wanted to get a winch, you could probably accomplish all that for 11K. It's also worth noting, too, so that Toyota is running Fox suspension. This Ford is running Bilstein suspension. They're both independent in the front. They are both solid in the back. And they're both just crushing it out here today. I mean, this is a pretty challenging trail. And so far, nothing we have done has... Uh, really push the limits of either of these vehicles capabilities. Yeah, I'm amazed at, our, you know, at the articulation of both of them. Now for all the Jeep fans out there, of course, both of these are independent front suspension. Uh, and you know what? It's fine, dude, it's fine. I know you Jeep guys love touting the fact that you've got a solid axle in the front and rear, but they're good. Ride quality wise, they're pretty much identical. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, I was really afraid to getting in here that I was gonna get, you know, tossed around uh, with, uh, the kind of the you know the less large tire if i'm being kind but yeah it's fine dude it's fine these guys do just well just as well as bronco from a camera standpoint the ford is a lot better i am not looking at a tater tot out the screen um so that certainly is a pro of the ford but from a trail running capability standpoint they are both more than up to the task yeah like we started this video really the biggest difference isn't you know under the hood isn't 
comfort or ride or ability, it seems to be, uh, you know, bigger tires and a convertible. And a front locker and a sway bar disconnect, but we'll, we'll glance over those. And a roll down rear window, can't forget that. All right, well, there's one more thing we gotta do, Tommy, and you know what that is, right? There's that one section here, which is pretty steep and deep, so uh, I think we gotta put one more test on this video before we hit the top. We've got this gnarly hill climb before the top, super rutted out, super articulated, probably 30, maybe even 35 degrees in steepness. So um, let's run up the Bronco and then the Forerunner and we'll see how they compare. So I'm gonna engage my lockers. Eh, I'll throw it into an off-road mode. I think the goat molds are more, to be honest, software than anything else. Nothing but sky, but that's where the front camera is proving to be quite useful. Front tire is gonna enter this dip here. Lock up the front two. All right, we're fully locked up. Entering the dip. Come on, Bronco, let's see you grip. Oh, what a machine. It just crawls up and over anything. What an absolute beast. So that is a case where the big tires certainly are helping me out because they don't fall into the holes, they drive over the holes. All right, now it's your turn, Dad. I'm gonna try to do the same thing that you did without using any momentum. We'll see. Did you ha did you have everything locked up? I was locked up. Here's where it might get a little stuck. A little stuck. No, it didn't get stuck. What a machine, what a machine is right. Tell me, I just had a thought. Yes. That might be the very first Bronco at the top of Imogene Pass. That's a pretty cool thought because in a few months they're gonna be everywhere, and in a few years they're gonna be 10K, and then they're just gonna be like cordwood out here. So pretty cool that we were one of the first to experience these incredible Colorado Rockies. All right, all right, maybe the first one today. I think that's fair. Okay, there's probably been a few up here. Yeah, they've <laughs> maybe, been around for a while. Maybe the engineers took them up here. But anyway, if you had to choose, I'm gonna put you in that weird position. Which would you choose? Well, I think if I had the opportunity to lease one, I would lease the Bronco. Because it is more fun in a lot of ways and it is the ultimate rock crawler. But if I wanted to buy a vehicle that was gonna last me for 15 years with no problems and still be able to do this kind of thing, Toyota all the way. You know what, winner, winner, chicken dinner. If you want the new kid on the block, go for that one. If you want the old friend, go for that one. As always, this is Roman. And Tommy, check out tfloffroad.com or tfl-studios.com for the latest and greatest in everything off-road. And thanks again to our friends at Onyx and of course the Ronald McDonald House for making this possible. Well, now we just gotta go back down. Yep, on we go. All right, so we've been on the road for like five hours and we're here in Montrose, Colorado. How far have we gone, Tommy? 293 miles, so we're gonna use our two-click method to fill up the vehicles the same way. And we'll see the fuel economy. The Bronco says we are averaging 19.3 miles per gallon. So what was your guess? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing 17 on the Bronco, and you guessed like 20. Now back in the day, there were actually three different Bronco body styles. There was the one that everybody thinks of, which was kind of the SUV, and that was called the half cab. That's a baby pickup truck. And then over there, that was a roadster. It actually came without a top. Now, of course, you don't have these three body styles. You just have this Bronco. And Tommy, did you know that recently Ford announced that they're not building a Bronco pickup truck? That is interesting, so no half cab Bronco, but um, what they need to do is do the Bronco Roadster like they did back in the day and sell it with no top, and then all the top concerns would be a thing of the past. Okay, all right, I've got my stopwatch, and that is, bam, 30 seconds. All right, now the pump says that we put in uh, 15 gallons, 0.260. How far have we gone, Tommy? 293 miles, and survey says 19.2 mpg. What did the car say? 19.3. Wow. So pretty close. Yeah, that's not bad, huh? Yeah, it's really good. So much better than I was expecting, but the question is, is that better than the Toyota? Let's go find out. All right, so the Toyota says that we averaged 19.8 mpg, 19.8. 
So a little better than the Ford, but let's see if that is correct according to the pump. By the way, in case you're wondering why we wait 30 seconds, it's for the fuel to settle so that we get an accurate measurement so that we bring you an accurate number, right Tommy? That's right. Three, two, one, now. All right. All right, do the math. 293 divided by 14.332, 20.44. Oh. So well. the Toyota did better by over a mile per gallon. Yeah. Pretty impressive. You know, that's that saying, right, Tommy? Eco boost. You can either get eco or you can get boost. Well, I still think 19, over 19 with 35 inch tall tires is darn impressive. This thing's got 32s and way less horsepower. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and since we don't know how they did uh, off road since it's back a day, we really can't comment on that. But guys, thank you for watching. And uh, hopefully, uh, we didn't smash them up tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully there is one, 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 one piece. We'll see you guys next time on another episode of TFL Off-Road. Thanks for watching. Ciao.